um, but there have been other people's moments. So uh, I'll, I'll ask you a que question now. Then. How did you feel taking someone like Danny, who had been on this roller coaster of, oh, he turned more times than my grand does when she's ballroom dancing, and because there were times when the crowd were behind him, the crowd were behind him, and they, there were times when it felt like you were going to pass the mantle on to him. Is he just too damn good as a bad guy? Danny isn't just an exceptional performer. Is I think you, you, good or bad guy, he's just exceptional. He he knows a crowd. He knows what the crowd want. Their thirst, especially the CPW, you know, and I can only base this on on how I've seen him in front of our fans. Um, Danny, he knows how to switch them on, how to switch them off, and like I said, to go out there with him and, and to dance with him was was a privilege of mine and something you know I'll cherish for a long time. Um, okay, I, I, I love watching the, the guy work. I mean, for example, you've you've booked it so many times. It's when you know that you're going to put Bert and Danny in the same ring, you can just turn your back and they'll come up with gold. Yeah, so yeah. They're, they're, they'll come up with gold. It's, it's brilliant to see. Um, do you think that the, the guys at the moment can turn the crowd on and off like that? that? That was my next point, actually, is, you know, you mentioned about myself raising the bar and, you know, my style of matches, you know, I'll go out there and give everything to the fans. It's, you know, it's important for me that the fans get every last piece of me. So I do raise that bar. Now, under that bar, the others, and I'm not going to mention specific names, do you feel that they have that same ambition to go out there and raise their levels show after show after show. Because for me as a performer, your job is to be better than your last performance. But, uh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll be completely honest with you. And it, it swings and roundabouts. Let's not mince words, this is your bread and butter as well as a passion. Now. This is a business, but you wouldn't be in the business if you didn't believe in it. I don't believe that the reason that you sell what you sell in that ring and put the effort you do is because of pounds in pocket. It's because you love wrestling. As a kid, we spoke about it as a kid. I'm not sure that people love it enough. I, I, that's the, that's the thing. Obviously, you've got a lot invested in it, both financially, time-wise, sweat equity, whatever. And blood. And blood, yeah, <laughs> blood, yeah, we've gone through so many ring canvases. <laughs> but I, I think at the moment, I'm, I'm the same. I've, I, I know I could be doing more. Every day I could be doing more. But, yeah, real life's come into it. But I, I just think at, at the moment, I haven't seen in quite some time someone that's just given me that moment where I've lost where I am in the story and just lost myself in what's happening in the ring. Yeah, it's, it's, for me, when you're backstage, you go into the gorilla position, you know, you've got yourself prepared, you're focused, the adrenaline, the nerves, the fear, and then your music pops and you go through that curtain and you become, whether it be Dominic De Winter, mm -hmm. or you become Mr. Richards, you become a Dan Evans, um, a Disco Burt. You go through that curtain. Is it not a responsibility? Is it not something within that wants the performer to go out there and do their very best, show after show, match after match? Why do some talent go out there and just go through the motions? Okay. What, what is that? You said about popping through the curtain. I've, I've been behind that curtain with you. I've shook Phil Richards' hand. And as I look through the crack, I can see that the man that left me backstage is not the man that went out into the ring. That's not, I'm not seeing that. What I'm seeing is the same person backstage walking down to the ring. And I just think that, I don't, I'm going to call this a Paul Heyman moment when I speak the truth. I don't think that they're embracing who they could be. 
I don't think, and I'm, this isn't just relevant to CPW, this isn't just relevant to certain wrestling promotions, this is a, relevant to the business as a whole. I just don't think that there's, I use the term purchasable, by that I mean characters that you can buy into, because I don't think there's enough self-belief. I think that's God's honest truth. I think I go out there and I know that I could do more. I think there are some people that step through that curtain that believe this is all they can give and they're giving it their best shot. And how, and you know, the, the other thing is, you know, again, I'm not going to name names, but you know, the, that's almost, I need to get home. I need to get out of the building and you know, and I, I've got to go to a party. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. It's like the, the, their focus is not even on their performance and their job. If I go to a party, the chances are around about three o'clock in the morning after too many tequilas, I'm talking about wrestling. And at that point, at three o'clock in the morning, I wish you know I was involved in wrestling. Get your head in the game. You've got the opportunity. Because most of the time, if you're not at wrestling, you're talking about it, thinking about it, dreaming about it. There are thousands, literally thousands of people in this country that would love the opportunity just to step in through that ring. You've been given the opportunity. Do it. I know how lucky I am. Phil knows how lucky you are. Everyone realises how lucky they are for about two months and then they become accustomed to it. And I don't know, is it a problem with business? Is it a problem with... I, I think when it comes down to it, as soon as you put money in someone's hand and say, there you go, job well done, they're, they're expecting it. There's so much level of expectation. I mean, okay, I've come into CPW later than, than I would have liked. Was this a problem when you first started? First started CPW? Yeah. Yes, I, th I think there's, there's always been that element of talent, the, the tour talent, that it's almost going through the motions as i said earlier it's, it's almost i'm going into the ring going through the motions get backstage going home you know and and i think it is a problem within the business definitely where these talents just do not care about the company they're working for it's just it's, it is just another company it is just another crowd Okay, CPW, you have an opportunity to be part of something. That's what I've, I've done. I've, I'm part of something. I'm not here to do a job. You don't go, right, I need a Dominic De Winter guy. You do what you can. You bring all of your skills to the table. You put, if you can do something, do it. If it's going to help. No, no, I'm not doing that. It's not my job. Your job is to push everything about who you're working for. Because if they succeed, you succeed. And when it comes down to actual in-ring ability, as you say, popping through the curtain. Training only goes so far, and people say, oh, you've either got it, or went, oh, the Next Gen Academy. Oh, man, some of the stuff I've seen go through there, I've seen people, and I know they're gonna do big things, as long as that cancerous complacency doesn't affect them. Okay, we're gonna wrap part one up. Yeah. Um, we're gonna come back. Some more positive stuff. Yes, more positive stuff. We're going to talk about the road to history. We're going to talk about history four. We're going to talk about the history of history. And 